Greetings, programs. My name is Wretch, and I'd like to welcome you to Tron Identity. So if you heard that intro just now, or have followed the channel for any amount of time, you know that I am a huge fan of the Tron franchise. I saw the original Tron when I was a little one back in the 80s, and since then, I've absorbed anything uh, Tron-related. It left a really long-lasting impression on me. Whether it be Tron Legacy, Tron Uprising, Tron Video Games, I just tend to absorb it like a sponge. And uh, Tron is part of my intro. Uh, Tron is part of the color scheme for both my YouTube and my Twitch channels. I've got the Tron Arcade 1-Up in my office right behind me. And actually, a few days ago, I was in Orlando, Florida at the Magic Kingdom at Disney World and got to ride the Tron Light Cycle Coaster for the first time, which was amazing. And also spent an obscene amount of money on Tron merchandise at the Tomorrowland gift store. So, yeah, it, it's one of those kind of franchises that I just really enjoy. But when I heard that this game was coming out, and not only was it a Tron video game, which is incredibly rare, but also an interactive novel and a detective story... I was like, oh yeah, that checked off so many boxes for us here on the channel. So, let's go ahead and uh, dive into the grid and see what Tron Identity has in store for us. So, um, we start out here with this iconic shot. This is the hidden office that is underneath Flynn's arcade that Sam f finds in Tron Legacy. We've got some light cycling going on there on the far left, like the two-player snake. We've got a map of the grid that you see in Legacy, and there's tons of Easter eggs around that diagram. Um, there is a V on the far right that looks like well, on the top of Sark's helmet. We've got Flynn's Tour to Light Cycle 82. There was a recognizer from Space Paranoids there. And it looks like there's some photos too of potentially Kevin Flynn on a motorcycle and potentially a picture or pictures of Sam Flynn with his mom. So that's interesting. You don't know anything about Sam's mom um, in the Tron series, at least nothing um, in the movies. So yeah, um, pretty cool. We can actually manipulate the camera here with the right stick. I am playing this on controller, but that seems to be everything that we, all the info that we can get so far. So let's go ahead and start a new game here. And I did start um, a game before just to make sure the sound and everything came off all right. I think we're in good shape. If I need to change anything, just let me know in the comments. But the intro here is very similar to Tron Legacy, and the music is definitely influenced by Daft Punk, because it sounds a, a little bit like um, the Grid Wars theme when you see Clue for the very first time. Check it out. And I believe the developer is Bethel, so good job, Mike. Now, we got some clues there in that intro. We had kind of an angry Christopher Lee-looking guy, and the blue circuits were being taken over by green circuits, so... Oh, here we go. Welcome to the grid program. To progress this story, press the next button. Oh, we can move this, too. imposing building. We can observe stuff. Disciple of Tron. Achievement unlocked. Oh, now I'm going to be looking for all the things. So we can actually scan the pages. How cool is that? You can read at your own pace or progress automatically by pressing the autoplay toggle. Which we will leave off. 
If you miss something, there's a chat log in the pause menu. Text speed and scale can be adjusted for your comfort in settings. Are you ready to begin program? Am I ever. Initializing. It's a cold night in the city. Nothing new there. You pull your coat tighter. Feel the heat of its glow. A small comfort against the brittle rain. Across the park stands the repository. A grand building. It stands sentinel amongst all surrounding it. This is architecture as power play. A statement made in light and stone. It's also where you'll be working tonight. You step forward, taking in the data trees that flank your path. Oh, it's an aerial shot. Cool. Sixth generation light cycle. Oh, cool. We've got like a... A lore lobby. Or a, a lore cache. Hmm. Definitely need to keep our eyes peeled. Suddenly, the screech of tires against asphalt to your left. The rhythmic pulse of a light cycle at full speed. You turn, seeing cold blue light racing towards you. Hope oh, nothing to touch there. Hold your ground or dive out of its way. Um... Hold my ground? You hold out your hand, stop. The cycle doesn't slow. In fact, you could swear it accelerates. Defiant. It blasts past on your left. Two more cycles follow it. Yellow. Core. Whatever the racer did, it was bad enough to get two enforcers on their tail. Peacekeepers. That was the polite word. Okay, so I'm wondering... Yeah, if I can go ahead and move this, it means that there's something we can scan. Unmanaged data tree. You operate in a less polite world. You push forward, more gingerly now. The park has fallen silent again. Good. You guys are gonna have me searching for, searching for things. At the entrance of the repository stands a slab of a security program. His armor is scuffed and scratched, as is his face. A cruel smirk is attempting to break through his clenched jaw. Grish. Bit of trouble on the road there, chief. Wakes you up. Oh, our character's name's Query. That's cool. He laughs. <laughs> well, next time, look both ways. You're not going to win a fair fight with a speeding light cycle. I just love it. It looks like a stage play. The laughing stops and is replaced by a stern frown. Can I help you? Oh, I have to do this. My branding demands it. Greetings, program. Cute. You can tell from the scowl that crosses the program's face that he isn't one for proper greetings. Who are you? You flash your badge. Four squares arranged in a T. It designates you as a member of the Disciples of Tron. A detective. No boss, no assigned task but uncovering truths. A professional observer. That's cool. Since Tron was a security program, a group of detectives? My name's Query. Your boss called me in. Something happened here. Something big enough to bring in outside help. The program is taken aback. He steps away from the door and motions you in. You could have sworn you saw the light in his eyes pulse with frustration. This isn't going to be an easy night.
This will be easier if you work with me. No answer. The program slams the door shut behind you, reactivating its glowing lock. No escape. Definitely not going to be an easy night. The lobby of the repository is beautiful. It demonstrates the same power as the exterior. Grish hustles you into the elegant space. You note that it's empty. Quiet. Where is everyone? It's late. Only a skeleton crew tonight. And the prisoner in the library. Prisoner. Don't worry about it. Grish looks tired. Must have already been a long night. He growls. Wasn't my call to bring you in. I had this handled. I was about to begin my investigation. Investigating what? Well, you've been told nothing. I get the call. I run program. Old school. I can respect that. You can tell Grish isn't used to dealing with inquiries like yours. He ushers you past the lobby's vacated front desk, toward an elevator. We've moved all non-essential staff to a secure location. I've been ordered to send you up to Prince. He runs this tower, and he's taken the events of the night very personally. You'd think they'd stolen from his personal collection. Well, maybe, way he sees it, that's exactly what happened. There's been a robbery. That's right. Someone picked a knight to steal something precious from us. Prince will fill you in on the details. I don't know them all yet either. I heard the explosion, activated the lockdown, and put things in order. Since then, I've been out here, securing the perimeter and waiting for you to show up. Took you long enough. Can I say that I love the coat design on Query? That's cool. I guess you were busy holding up traffic. Not successfully. But I respect the effort. An explosion? Yeah, long way up. I've not been up there yet, but it was loud. A bomb? Well, who knows what's up there. But I have to assume any explosives will be tightly secured. Grish moves to the elevator. A keypad to its side awaits activation. He reaches out his hand to the panel. It hovers, a sharp intake of breath. I... What? Is there a problem? I... Grish stands in front of the panel, looking at it, then back to you. He's confused. He catches himself, confusion turning into frustration. Since the explosion, I've been missing... things. Memories? Yes. I don't know if it's got anything to do with the explosion, but... My memory access is failing me. There are... holes. Your DOT, you said? You can defragment identity disk, can't you? Recover memories? I can. Do what needs to be done. Here, take it. He hands you his disk, grudgingly. Defrag. Match data cards to defrag a disk. Drag the circle card onto its matching neighbor. Okay.
as well as suits you can match by number, drag the three card to its neighbor. Clear eight cards. There are two legal move types, adjacent and three packets away. Cards cannot cross the top of the disc. No move is final. Undo any play at any time. Stuck? Let the AI make your next move. A limited number of times per puzzle. Oh, that's handy. To complete the puzzle, reduce card count to the target. Pick your own moves from now on. Okay, so matching matching symbols are matching numbers. Um I guess we can do that. Let's do um maybe four there. I guess we have to have zero, right? Let's do Yeah, that works. But how do we make these go away? Like so. Okay, I see what we have to do. Here, let me let me back out. So we can match, like, numbers like that, and symbols, so we basically have to make sure that one of these is, we gotta try and get these fours next to each other. So let's do this, maybe? Um, one in one. Oh, that's really interesting. And you have to jump a certain amount of spaces. Like that. And then we can go there. But then those have to match too, those numbers. I kind of dig it though. It's it's cool. It's like a, a more complex matching game than you would normally get in a game. Um, let's go ahead and have that happen. We can have those match. So maybe what we need to do is make sure that we have multiple matches. So we got zero, we got one ones, fours, and zeros, right? Um, possibly. Okay, okay. So one. And then zero. And then we have one here, one here. Got it. Troubleshooting achievement unlocked. I probably made that a lot more difficult than it needed to be. New disc color white, a significant number. The Administrator Prince smiled. I think that's everything. Did you have any questions? Grish shook his head, silent. He needed the job. It seemed simple enough. No need to put the new boss off with an unguarded question or comment. You're not the talkative type, I suppose. Good. Prince typed a number into the elevator and stopped himself. 
You'll need a code, I suppose. Are you a religious program, Grish? Grish grunted, noncommittal. I don't ask for utter devotion, but I do expect respect. For myself, for Kor, and for the users. Let this be a daily reminder to you of their importance and seniority to us all. He gestured toward the pad and keyed in 1982. 1982, the year Flynn first made contact with the programs, according to the user calendar. A sacred time. Burn it into your memory. Grish did so. He would use this code every sentence cycle. You hand the disc back. Grish takes it, replaces it on his back. A slight pulse in his eyes signals the data refresh. Got it. Grish gives the slightest of nods. It's the closest you'll be getting to a thank you. He taps the code into the elevator, unlocking it. I've unlocked repeat access rights for you. You'll be able to travel to any location Prinz allows. Any other gaps in your memory? Grish grunts. He's clearly frustrated to have shown this weakness to you. You move toward the elevator, but Grish puts out a heavy hand, blocking your path. I'm not going to let you do this without me. Let's try kid gloves to start. You could join me. Grish laughs. <laughs> I don't join you, program. You join me. But your boss called me. He snorts. Not my choice. You push forward. He's surprised. Hmm. Let's work together. You reach out a hand. He takes it and shakes it. All right. The most sincere smile of the night plays across Grisha's face. Prince's office is upstairs. He'll be waiting for you. For us. Anything more to do down here? Unless you wanted to have a sit down and watch the energy falls, no. The elevator door is open. I want to see if I miss the energy falls. It's time to visit the man who called you here. Parallel process achievement. Prince may consider this an office, but it's more of a shrine. User memorabilia lines the walls. Oh. Grand window. Prin stands by the window, looking out over the city. He turns and smiles as you both enter. Oh, I see the red. That's never good in Tron. You found a friend, Grish. Grish snorts. You hired one for me, Prinz. I did, and you seem exceptionally happy to have the company. Prince chuckles to himself. Very glad you could join us, Query. You come very highly recommended. I do the work. So I've heard. Welcome. Prin steps in front of his desk. He registers your confusion at the bright lights on its surface. A little showy, perhaps. I've been told it looks like a shrine, but much like the users, I enjoy a little theater. What happened here? That's a longer conversation, I fear. 
Prince smiles another smile. It's a smile calculated in its charm. The kind of self-conscious allusion to kindness that you've only ever seen in those with assured authority. Grish, still standing, tenses. He's seen that smile too many times. Tell me, Query, for whom do you fight? Well, I figure if Query is a disciple of Tron, Tron fought for the users, you know, so... I fight for the users. Another smile. We're sincere this time. Ah, a traditionalist. A program after my own heart. A user set this world in motion with vision, purpose, a steadfast ethical framework. Prince steps back to the window. Flynn built this world for us, Query. He built us an ark safe from clue, from his intolerance of our kind. We must never forget what we owe, whose grace we rely upon. He saw the potentials of the ISOs and our value. Your order was created with similar optimism. The Disciples of Tron. Independent seekers of truth in the face of tyranny. It's all very impressive, I'm sure. You too are a part of Flynn's design. Do not forget it. He will return. So this is set after Legacy. I don't think he's coming back. Unfortunately, my faith is not dependent on your opinion program. Grish tenses. The boss and I have different views on the subject. I fight for the programs of the repository. In the war, they taught us to fight for the one next to us. Keeps things simple. Prince frowns. Your loyalty to those around you is why I indulge your argumentative demeanor, Grish. But loyalty without faith is a fickle thing. My faith is strong. Not entirely convinced, Prince moves toward a bookcase. My interest in the users goes beyond blind faith. I imagine you've noticed my collection. It's very impressive. Thank you. Does any piece in particular catch your eye? Those colorful boxes. Prince moves to the shelf, removing a box. This is a form of user entertainment. A video stored on an analog magnetic tape. They record fictional performances and share or sell them to each other. He smiles as he looks at the tape. This was apparently one of Flynn's favorites. I've not watched it, but the user on the cover looks heroic enough. It's an identity disc? Prince shakes his head. A nowhere near as precise. Events are shown in an abbreviated fashion, in a two-dimensional image. No internal processes are recorded. They are obtuse, abstract. But according to our records, users love them. Prince places the, back, the box back on the shelf. Odd. Prince smiles. Indeed. Prince's face stiffens. For the first time, he lets the stress of recent events show on his face. Prince. It's impossible to tell if Grish is sympathetic or frustrated. Tonight, the unacceptable has occurred. Our repository has been broken into and our work is in great danger. I'm sure Grish told you about the explosion. Our vault. We have been attacked. I don't know for sure who did this, but I have my suspicions. I need to know who is responsible 
and what they stole from us. What was in the vault? A good question. I don't know. We serve at the pleasure of Kor, and they move items in and out as they please. He looks down. I wish I had a better answer, but for now, I am as in the dark as you. My building is host to a great many treasures, but presumably tonight someone stole our greatest jewel. Prince gestures broadly. The programs with the answers are throughout this tower. I'm hoping that an outsider like yourself may be able to find the truth of all this. I'd start with the crime scene itself, or the suspect we already caught. It was necessary to contain the threat. Absolutely. Grish turns to you. A visiting dignitary. I don't like new faces. Not when there's a coincidental explosion moments after their arrival. One of my men secured the prisoner immediately. We've created temporary accommodations in the library. Give my apologies to Ada when you see her. Not exactly her role to play, Jailer. Gotta go to the crime scene first, I imagine. I'll start with the vault. No need to tell me, Program. The DOT are independent of my authority. I hope that you also remember your oath of non-interference. Come back here when you have anything to tell me, or any questions I can answer. Prince's smile broadens. It's been good to talk to you, Query. I will make it known to my staff that you are to be supported in your investigation. I believe you can do good work here. This is my repository, and I will do everything I can to help you. Come to me if you need anything. You leave the office, and Grish follows. For the users. Whew. Alright, guys. Well, this seems like a perfect place to go ahead and call it a first episode. Very interesting style of gameplay with the puzzles mixed in with the investigation. But um, I have a feeling that the story is going to get very complicated, like most of these kind of noir style stories do. But I hope you all have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.